I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Harry Murphy. You can also call him Snake or Meathead. But Lori does not have a crush on him. She has a crush on Barry Murphy. Well, she actually used to have a crush on Barry Murphy. She doesn't even have a crush on him anymore. So I'm going to hang up Snake over here on my snake hook. And I'm going to start by telling you about the Medusa story, which many of you probably already know a little bit. Uh, Medusa is the snake-headed Gorgon who, for reasons way too complicated to tell here, uh, the young god Perseus had to behead her and bring home the, the snakehead to the evil king. Problem was, if you looked at Medusa, you turned to stone. So he the way that he handled it was Athena, the goddess Athena gave him a mirrored shield and he looked in the mirrored shield and killed, saw her image in the mirrored shield, which I guess doesn't turn you to stone, killed Medusa behind his, uh, behind his back and everything you know, worked out fine. It was whatever, all fun and, and good Greek mythology. But that's not the whole story. The story behind the story is that the way that Medusa got to be Medusa was she was um, raped by the god Poseidon in Athena's temple. And so Athena got angered at this, uh, but she got angry at Medusa for being the victim of a rape in her temple because this meant that her temple got desecrated instead of becoming angry at Poseidon for doing the raping, for being the rapist. Um, so she, you know, said, Medusa, we shall make it so that no man shall ever look at you again. And she smited her to become the snake-headed Gorgon that we all know from Greek mythology. This is classic rape victim blaming. And um, it, you know, has repeated itself in stories in the news today, right now as we speak. Um, for, uh, I have, for my Medusa painting, I have reimagined Medusa. I have returned her humanity and her beauty to her. Um, I have also, I have also given her a little bit of a hashtag stigmata over here and a blending of Christian and um, contemporary iconography, and um, and that's how I that's how I've done my Medusa painting. A uh, similar story is the Arachne story, where Arachne is a young and beautiful woman in Greek mythology who is a superior craftsperson. She uh, can weave a beautiful tapestry. And she um, wove a tapestry that was in a weaving contest with the goddess Athena, where her tapestry was far superior to Athena's tapestry. So once again, Athena, got all ticked off that, you know, she had been bested by a mortal and she um, smited poor young Arachne and said, oh, you're such a good weaver, then you are condemned to weave forever and turned her into a spider. And that's where the word Arachne comes from for Arachnid. Um, so basically, both of these stories, both of these stories are part, or both of these paintings are part of my goddess project. And um, in these stories, it sounds like Athena is the evil one, smiting younger women for doing nothing more than being raped in the wrong place or weaving a superior tapestry. So, Athena is the evil one? Well, not if I have anything to say about it. Um, in my goddess project, I seek to turn those myths on their end, on the other, you know, whatever, flip them over and reimagine the myths. And um, that's what I'm here to tell you about. And that is exactly what the Love Athena painting that we're here to talk about attempts to do. Welcome everybody to Living Figuratively. This is the, with your host, Judy Takas, me. Um, this is the show that asks the question, why not fill your home with the fascinating faces and figures of people that you don't even know? Why not fill your home with figurative art? Each week I spotlight works of my own or works from my collection, show you how I incorporate it into my life, 
and um, in the hopes that it will inspire you and make you love figurative art and see why you should love it. So what is the Love Athena triptych that I've been talking about for you know weeks now? The Love Athena triptych, which you see right here, is the painting that bridges the gap between my Chicks with Balls project and my Goddess, Goddess project. My Chicks with Balls series honor, honors unsung female heroes, real women, real women that I really know and have actually met and their stories are true. Um, the Goddess Project seeks to reimagine age-old myths, legends, and stories from all the religions through a contemporary feminist lens. Basically, all these, a lot of these stories have um, perpetrated, infiltrated our uh, culture and shape our thinking today. The Love Athena triptych and Athena's role in, um, you know, screwing over Medusa and Arachne and many other things, you know, in Greek mythology, um, illustrates the Queen Bee Syndrome, which is where, which is the concept that there's only room for one woman at the top. And that woman is, sees all other women as her, um, as her enemies, and she keeps them from trying to, from being able to excel and sit by her side because there are no other chairs for other women. Uh, men in positions of power feel differently because they see that there, there's a whole bunch of spots for men at the table, but there's only one spot for a woman. And if that one woman lets another woman up, you know, she might get toppled. So this cultural myth, my conjecture is that it has infiltrated our culture and because we accept this as a foregone conclusion, it keeps groups of wise women from ruling or groups of wise women from being in leadership, position, leadership positions on a national scale. Um, we see it in small scales, you know, in families, in villages, on sports teams, PTAs, um, maybe some women-owned women businesses like on a small scale, Groups of wise women rule together and it all works nicely together. But um, in high positions of power, it, it's still a much more of a rare occurrence. And I do see this changing because, you know, even in the news, I, I see more and more situations where women are supporting each other in, um, in the political, political arena. And I also see some wonderful, bold, peaceful moves by women in leadership positions. Um, huge respect for Muriel Bowser, mayor of DC, for uh, renaming the that uh, plaza, Black Lives Matter Plaza. I thought that was a very bold, awesome, peaceful move to really drive a point home. So I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that this is changing. Um, and the Love Athena triptych, I'll tell you why and how it, uh, it came to be. So for the Love Athena triptych, what I've done here is I cast myself in the role of Athena. Um, but this is a kind and wise Athena that is supporting her, um, supporting her sisters instead of, you know, smiting them. She holds a reflective shield, as do all the women that pose because all the women that that pose for this also have their own people to protect. So like everybody got their own, got their own shield. Uh, many of the women that posed for the Love Athena triptych were part of my original Chicks with Balls project and had po posed you know, years before <coughs> for Chicks with Balls. I've also welcomed new people to pose. I have a young uh, mother and child here <coughs> who, um, it's, they're symbolic of you know hope for the future and everything. And she holds this little tiny shield down there, which which um, you know has a has a nice big heart on it, also kind of a love shield. Um, but anyway, so let's start over over on the on the far right, I guess here with how I um, assembled and chose the different people to pose for uh, Love Athena. 
Um, one of the people that I felt really, really badly needed to be in it is my friend Shannon, who, when she first posed for Chips with Balls, she was going through gender reassignment. And um, she posed at a very tricky time during that process where she had started it, but was really not very far along into it. And um, she saw the whole posing for Chips with Balls as a very life-affirming um, act because it's an all-woman all woman thing. There were no men posing. And uh, so, you know, and I actually, I actually did a tiny, a smaller triptych of, of her image because I just loved painting her and she, you know, her image was wonderful. And she definitely had gone through some major changes since then. So I went back to re revisit her, her painting. Um, and I traveled east to Pennsylvania to go visit her. And we had our posing session, which I was thrilled to pieces to see her again. She um, has, is now living a complete life as a woman. And she's even started this uh, beautiful Facebook um, cooking page where she does these amazingly gorgeous um, food, you know, recipes, but they're like food arrangements on a plate. And she takes pictures of them and they're on, the, they're on her Facebook page, which is called Shan Can Cook. And um, which it's especially poignant because during the, the bad parts of her gender transition, before the gender transition, um, she had been bulimia, she had had bulimia. So her relationship with food, I'm so happy to see it like this positive artistic relationship with food now. So I had her, I revisited Shannon, had her pose. I also went um, west and I had my friend Pam pose again. Pam was one of the original first people to pose for Chase with Balls and her portrait was the first one that I did that was a two-sided, two-way one that could be hung both ways. It was sort of a double, well, it was a double image portrait. And, um, and it was actually, I think, my first double image flippable portrait. So she, it was awesome that she posed. Um, when I went back to revisit her, she was living an amazing life now. She had gone through a very protracted divorce and, um, but she emerged on the other side of it with this beautiful life in Nebraska. Gorgeous house, wonderful relationship with her kids who she speaks to every day, which I'm very jealous of. Um, and even that was even before they all had to come back from college and from life to um, hang out together during the corona times. And um, when I, when I went to her house, I noticed she had a circle theme going in the way that she has the place decorated. There were a lot of circles. And so for her shield, I put three circles on it to represent her three children that she holds very, very, very close. And all right, now over here we are, we come to my reflective shield. Um, in this for all my Chips with Balls portraits, I always use the, um, there's a, a reflective gazing ball that I use as my sort of characteristic ball. And it's always something different reflected in it, but it's usually my studio. So true to form, it's my studio reflected in this, um, in, my, in my reflective shield. Um, and I have images of my friend Maria's Chicks with Balls painting, Leah's Chicks with Balls painting, Norma's Chicks with Balls painting, Kathy Rogers' Chicks with Balls painting, and of course my mom's Chicks with Balls painting because my mom um, would definitely have posed for the Love Athena triptych. In fact, she would do it with relish. She would probably find her own helmet or something um, had she not passed away a couple of years ago. I also have references to the Goddess Project because remember this triptych bridges the gap between the Goddess Project and Chicks with Balls. Um, I have reflected the first painting that I did, which was truly for the Goddess Project, which is, um, it's called Venus, She's Got It, where uh, I have this beautiful model with the planet Venus behind her, and I've basically turned the, um, the, the Renaissance artist's concept of Venus, where she's this fleshy white woman languishing all over the place, 
I have flipped that and reimagined her as a beautiful African-American woman who um, coincidentally um, had was a very young mother at the time. So she also embodies the fertility aspect of, uh, of Venus. And I've, I, you know, I, I love this painting. She's looking down on Earth, looking at it from a different perspective where Africa is at the top. And um, so I have a little reference to her reflected reflected in my shield and instead of wreaking vengeance on my sisters i wield a paintbrush on them and that's why i have my paintbrush there for my for my shield and of course i have the sweet 16 necklace which i'll tell you about next week when we do the how about this uh, about this painting but that's from my friend kim mati the uh, jewelry artist and i have my helmet and Reference to chicks, because there's a chick right there. So moving, moving along, Laura Lee, whose chick's portrait is called Laura Lee, Balls of Silver, Nerves, Nerves of Steel. Um, she, I asked her to pose too. She is the most recent person who posed for chicks with balls. And at the same time as she posed for Chicks with Balls, I was also starting the collecting the people process for, um, for the Love Athena triptych. So I figured, you know what, I'm gonna ask her to pose for Love Athena too. And she represents the older generation and the wisdom that is gained from going through hell and back. And um, so showing how, you know, someone can really emerge from it beautifully. She's a phenomenal jewelry artist, and I have one of her jewelry pieces enlarged hugely, um, and have, have that as her shield instead of, uh, instead of a true shield shield. Moving along, um, this one is Serpy, whose original uh, portrait is uh, Serpy Always Enchanted. On um, the theme of the people that pose for chicks with balls going through major a major transition during the time when the, between the time when they first posed and between when they posed for Love Athena triptych, many of them have gone through hell, many of them have gone through hell and back, and many of them are still going through it. Um, Serpy during that intervening time suffered what no parent should ever have to suffer, and um, so I definitely wanted to revisit revisit her portrait as well. I have also, with her symbolic shield, because she was a magistrate and works within the justice system, I put the blind eyes of justice on her shield. And um, she got the sword partially for compositional purposes, but partially because somebody needs to be the one to fight for justice. And over here on the far, far right is my friend Sharon, who you may recognize from the Chick with Balls poster. She was the poster child for the museum show at a uh, poster, poster woman, not poster child, poster woman for um, the Chick with Balls show at the, uh, the Zanesville Museum of Art that just closed and we just brought home all the paintings. Um, and Sharon also has, you know, um, mad props to her. She's done hard things, she's come back from hard things, she's doing more hard things, and she's coming back from hard things again. So much love and respect to you, Sharon, for all you're doing. Um, now, what's her, uh, what is on her shield? Her shield, she's got Medusa on her shield, if you can believe it. And why does she have Medusa on her shield? Because back in the day when we first met, which was probably about 20, 21 years ago maybe, um, she told me that she lived in Cleveland Heights. I told her I grew, grew up in Cleveland Heights. She told me she used to work at the Medusa Cement Corporation. I lived right around the corner from the Medusa Cement Corporation. And every time I walked by the building, I saw this sculpture of Medusa, Medusa's head stuck up on the building. It was a very characteristic, iconic Cleveland thing, which is why I was able to find this picture. I didn't take this picture you know, 50 years ago or 45 years ago. Um, so we talked about Medusa. We, when our kids were little, we used to go to all kinds of Cleveland cultural field trips. 
one of the places that we always went to was the botanical gardens, the Cleveland Botanical Gardens. And lo and behold, one of the times we were there, we found the Medusa head from, from Medusa Cement Corporation had actually found its forever home at the uh, Cleveland Botanical Gardens, which is crazy. But anyway, so there it was. And Sharon had also asked me how come I didn't have her pose for the Medusa painting that I did. So I thought it would be a fitting consolation prize to put Medusa on her on her shield. Now I do want to I want to finish up with um, a little bit of focus on Sharon's necklace, which is a uh, peace sign which she's purposely wore for the per for the uh, for the posing session, and I believe it was given to her by uh, Nina, who it was also a poster woman for the first Chips with Balls show. You can look her up on my blog. Um, and basically, the peace sign, I want to wish you all a, a uh, peace, love, and joy for the next couple, couple, you know, coming months and coming years, and also strength, understanding, and empathy as we go through, go through the things that we're going to be, have to go through as time goes by in these weird, weird, weird times. Um, the Love Athena triptych right now, it's not for sale at this point because it still has many places to go, uh, but I will happily make a gicle of it. And as I've told you, during these corona times, which these corona times are still going on, 50% um, uh, of all my profits from any sales made during this time will be paid forward into the struggling art community. And that includes sales of my books, which are on my website, and any of my paintings that um, that I talk about can be made into gicles. And this Chips with Balls book actually has the Love Athena triptych in it. So it's kind of a fun way to get it and read about it if you so desire. So thank you all. Thank you all for joining me tonight on uh, Living Figuratively for the who what and why of the love of the, the love Athena triptych. Um, next week will be part two where I tell you the how, meaning that I'm going to go into the detail of how I constructed the how I constructed the shields, how I collected the people, how I had them pose, how I had them pick stuff, and what painters I used as inspiration to solve all the different visual problems that a giant triptych magnum opus thing like this might, um, might involve. So thank you all for joining me tonight. See you next week, same bad time, same bad channel, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Thursday night. Y'all come back then, you hear?